These are pagan gods or pagan spirits. So if they come to a Christian nation, their mission is to take a turn a nation that is quote Christian and turn it into a pagan nation, paganizing. That is what we have been watching for the last half century. What you're saying, what's going on? That's what's going on. And it even says he caused he caused Israel to turn away from the commandments. We literally have struck down the Ten Commandments in America. We, we, we banned it. The spirit of Baal is in all these things. We are watching, we are watching this nation and this civilization becoming pagan. What does the return of the gods reveal? Yeah, this is a mystery that affects everything that's happening right now in our world, in our culture. What if that behind everything we're seeing, the changes of America, the the what's happening to the children, what's happening to the media, behind that is an ancient mystery that goes back to the tablets of ancient Mesopotamia. What if the gods that we hear about, you know, gods that we think, okay, that's fiction. Well, that they are in one sense, but what if there's a reality to them? What if they are actually, there are actually beings linked to this? And what if, what are they? Who are they? And what if they returned to our day now? What would happen? What if they are the invisible agents behind all these changes that are taking place? Taking place in the classroom, taking place on television, taking place on our computer screens, uh, taking place in the Supreme Court. What if it lies behind things like the, the sign of the rainbow, like, like what's happening to gender, what's happening in everything that's affecting everyone. What if one of the principalities or gods actually, uh, actually manifested in New York City, not far from where we are right now? Uh, what if that's happening? And the, the thing is, here's the thing is, it is happening. It is real. It is right from the Bible. It explains, I mean, when people, when we were talking before, when I first was sharing this, you know, the, the one who, who was speaking to me said, this is every, this explains everything. Well, we're all dealing with it. Everyone who's watching right now is dealing with it. Every family is dealing with it. Every relative of the, is dealing with it. We are all dealing with it in our lives. And so yeah. this, the return of the gods is to remove the veil and to expose this that we can see because, you know, we can't win if you don't know what you're fighting, you know, um, and to empower God's people. And uh, we'll, we'll be able to, there's so much to unpack. We'll be able yeah. to touch or give a taste of it. But I believe this is one of the most important things I could ever, ever bring forth. Jonathan, they say the first rule of war is to <laughs> know your enemy. This is a spiritual war. Yes. What is the mystery of the spirits, number one? And number yeah. two, the book is titled The yeah. Return of the Gods, plural. Right. We know there's one God, the God Absolutely. of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Absolutely. but there is something deeper yeah. behind, as you said, yeah. these ancient yeah. demonic pagan entities. Yeah, well, the Bible speaks a lot about the gods. You know, it says, who are you, who is like you among the gods? You know, the Lord says, I will execute judgment against the gods. Has a lot to say about that. And so, so what are the gods? Well, first of all, all over the world, there were gods. I mean, all over the world, every culture, it's kind of a strange phenomenon, was worshiping gods, every culture. So, so why and what, what is it? Why is it universal? Well, the Bible gives the answer. The Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy and in the Psalms says they worshiped or they even sacrificed their children to the gods, but the word it uses, the word the Shadim, the Shadim, that, that's in the book. Like, what are they? The, the word Shadim means entities, beings, yeah. spiritual beings. Now, in ancient Babylon, they said they could be good or bad, but in the Bible it says, no, no, they're only bad. So it's, it's the Shadim. It, so it wasn't just these figments of people's imagination. Now there was imagination and all, but it's, it's, it's that word. Now, when it was translated by the rabbis into Greek, they chose the word daimonia which we get the word demon from it. And that is the, the word that actually Paul uses when he says the same thing. He says what the Gentiles, the pagans are worshiping, what they're doing, they're actually worshiping the daimonia or the shedim. These entities behind the gods are entities. So what it's saying is that, that again, not that the mythology is true, of course, it's sure. but that, that sometimes that, you know, the mythology of man could follow what these things are. And these entities, demonic, can actually use the mythologies because what's the, what's their point? To bring worship away from God. I mean, so you'd expect this. So the Bible says there's something very real going on. Yeah. So the question is, what would happen if these things that were there in the world if they if they return, which 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 we'll get into. Yeah, I mean, look, you had golden calves, you had idols made of wood. Obviously, they're not gods, yeah. Jonathan. But as you lay out in the book, there are spirits and principalities, demonic, yes, spiritual influences yes. behind these idols. Yeah, yeah. The god, the gods were the masks. I mean, the, yeah. that. So when we say the gods, so the Bible speaks about this as entities. So that's the first piece of the mystery. 
The next part is is that is that you know there's a link in in the world between the gods and these cultures that worship them and spirit possession because actually you'll find that all over the world. You find that phenomenon, of, they all describe possession. Why? Because they're given to the gods. If the gods are spirits behind them, they're given to the spirits. So when you look at pagan the pagan world, you see all the signs of possession. And the closer someone was to a god, like the oracles and the priests and priests, the yeah. more they, they, they manifested the signs, classic signs of possession, you know, foaming, you know, shaking. Yeah. All, that was part of pagan worship. But it's not only that, it's also that, the entire culture can be possessed. An entire civilization can be possessed. And that's going to be very important when we talk about what's happening now. But that happened back then. So you have, you only have not only individual possession, you have civilizational possession. A nation can become possessed. And that's what we're going to get into. Well, I think of the Babylonians, the Assyrians, the yes. Romans, the Greeks, Jonathan, all these pagan deities uh, that they worshiped. But eventually you lay out in the book yes. that they were in the grip of this, of this yes, really yes. demonic possession yes. of a culture, a society, a civilization. Yes. But eventually those gods departed. That's yes. one reason the book is called The Return <laughs> of right. the Gods. That's right. Where did they return from? Where did they go? How did they eventually yeah. depart yeah. from the ancient world? Yeah, one answer, Jesus. One answer, Messiah and God. You know, in that, in that he came into the world. You know, now, now the only you know, the only part that wasn't, you could say, wasn't possessed is was Israel. And when Israel turned away from God, they went into it too. But even what we call Western civilization, our our quote civilization, that was possessed back then. So what happened was God came, Messiah came. He had the power of, in the Greek, it says ekbalo, to cast out, cast out the spirits. Well, that also means the gods too, because the gods were linked to the spirits. You know, And so what happened is when he sent the gospel into the world, they were going into the pagan world. So you have a clash of God and the gods, the spirit and spirits. And that's why when you read the book of Acts, what you're seeing this clash, you know, Paul is, is followed by a possessed woman. You know, there's an, right. out, there's an uproar in a city over the gods. And, and so you have, you have a clash, you have persecution. Now the war against Christians was the war of the gods. They were told, they were said, you know, worship the gods and we won't kill you. You know, it was a war of gods. In fact, the great persecution of Rome started by that oracle, this possessed woman in the temple gave the word to do it. Right. So it's a war. So what happened is, but the gospel triumphed. And the gods departed. The temples became empty. They were gone. They were rid. So if the gods are departed, that also means the spirits were departed. This was the greatest mass exorcism in the history of the world. Wow. And every time the gospel came, that's what happened. So you have this, and it's unique. That's why Western civilization is unique. It was the only civilization that was exorcised. But now the question is, what would happen if they return? And there's actually a mystery that, and a parable that Messiah gave that actually unlocks the key. Jonathan, tell us about the House of Spirits yeah. and why that's so central to unlocking this mystery that yeah. you unpack in the book. Yeah, remember that the Lord gave a parable and he said, if a spirit departs from a man, it goes around roaming, looking for a place. But if it finds no place, it says, I'm going to return to my house. We're talking about the guy. Goes back, finds it all clean and in order and empty. And so he says, you know what? I'm going to bring my friends. Goes out and it says, brings seven spirits worse than the first. And comes in now and says, the man, now the, the latter state is worse than the beginning. The man is worse now in being repossessed than he was before he even got cleansed. Now, when people look at this, okay, that is a, a warning. Yes, you don't turn back from knowing God. Yes. But he says, so it will be with this generation. He wasn't talking about just one man. He's talking about a civilization. And so when you take this to the biggest, the biggest application, you have a culture that, again, we said was possessed by the spirits and the gods, was exercised, Western civilization became exercised. Now, here's the warning. If that culture that has known God ever turns away from God, if it ever turns back, the spirits will return to it. The gods, the same gods that, re or the spirits that are represented by the gods will come back, that were cast out, will return, and they will return to repossess the house, to repossess the civilization. Now think about America. Think about, now you want to, this is, you want to understand people saying, what's going on? How, this is so crazy. This is what's going on. And, and the thing is that what it says, when it comes back, it's going to be worse than before. When you look at civilizations that have turned from God, like Russia, 
was demonic. Look at Germany, turn from God. Look what happened. Well, now it's happening to America and the entire Western world. Jonathan, if the gods, these unclean demonic spirits, have indeed returned, as you lay out in the book in great detail, how would they return in the modern era? We're, we're not necessarily seeing people worshiping golden calves, obviously, mm. and idols of wood. How would they return? It seems much more subversive today. They're returning to a, a civilization that has known God. So, you yeah. know, that, that quote, a quote, Christian civilization. So it's a whole different thing. Can't come back, first of all, can't come back all at once. Can't come back saying, hey, we're going to mess you up. It's going to come back step by step by step, first by a little thing, a gentle. And the thing is, what's going to open the door is if that civilization starts turning away from God. And when you can see the real marker is uh, the beginning of the 1960s, you start seeing the turning, putting God away, putting prayer away. That is what's going to open the door. And the thing is that the when you look at, you know, which gods are going to return, uh, well, the same gods or the same principalities that were in, when Israel turned away from God, you know, because we're in that pattern, that they're going to return. And, and with Israel, there were three primary gods, among others, that were, that, that, that epitomized everything. One I call in the book, in the Return of God, is called the Possessor. And you call these, by the way, the Dark Trinity. Yes, it's a Trinity. That's right, the Dark yeah. Trinity. Yeah, the first is the, called the Possessor. The second is called the Enchantress. And the third is called the Destroyer. So these are the three primary yes. Gods yes, that yes. have returned. Yes. As, as look, uh, you, you mentioned rightly, Jonathan, beginning in the 1960s, yeah. a bit of a national backsliding yeah. away from God yeah. really began then. Yeah. Prayer removed in the schools, yeah. the so called sexual revolution. Yeah. You dig into it in the yeah. book. Yeah, well, the first, yeah, first you open the door. The door is turning from God. But when you open the door, the house is never going to stay empty. That's what it's saying. And so what happens, you have the first one called the possessor. In Hebrew, <clears throat> his name was Baal or Baal, which means the possessor or the Lord or the master or the owner. And what he did, or this principality, is he was the alternate substitute gods. He was the god of the of turn away from God. He, I'm going to be your new god. I'm going to make you prosperous. And he's the one, or this principality, that drove God out, out of the public square, out of the palace, out of the children's education. So what do you see in America? You see a spirit that starts driving God out step yeah. by step by step. Started small. People said, okay, it's taking prayer out. Look at where it has come. Because again, you empty the house. If you empty the house, you're going to, something else is coming in. And so what comes in is this spirit of Baal. Really and, the main pagan deity, it yeah. seems. Baal was the most prevalent in ancient times. Yeah, he's, he, later on, he's actually associated with Zeus, you know, in the time of the, of time of the Greeks yeah. and the Romans. So he was the king of the Canaanite gods. He's the first one. He's like that first spirit that comes in. He, you know, yes. and, and, and then he brings his friends. And so in the Bible, it says, it says he caused Israel to forget God. So, so he, so what's happening is there's a spirit that has caused America to forget God, to forget that it ever knew God. You know, if you knew back then in the 60s, where if people knew where it was going to end up, you know, what, what the thing is this? These are pagan gods or pagan spirits. So if they come to a Christian nation, their mission is to take a turn a nation that is, quote, Christian and turn it into a pagan nation paganizing. That is what we have been watching for the last half century. What you're saying, what's going on? That's what's going on. And it even says he caused he caused Israel to turn away from the commandments. We literally have struck down the Ten Commandments in America. We, we banned it. The spirit of Baal is in all these things. We are watching, we are watching this nation and this civilization becoming pagan. And you have written many times, Jonathan, and really uh, many of your books about the parallels between Israel's trajectory with the Lord and America's trajectory with the Lord are, are shared destinies yes. in some ways. So I guess it's no surprise to you, obviously, that some of the same problems that plagued ancient Israel yeah. are now plaguing America. Yeah, when, with the harbinger in the other books, it's speaking about the signs that happen. Now this is speaking about the actual yeah. spirits that are in there, and they're in America now. And, and it actually goes deep because, because the, the process of Baal, taking, a, taking possession of a culture, is that, he, that the, 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 it's deep. Because, for instance, in, in the pagan world, you had many gods. You didn't have one god. So you didn't have one truth. You had many truths. You had, you can make your own, you can make your idol. I created my own reality. That is what we are watching when people says your truth, yes. my truth. If I say, if I say I'm a tree, you have to accept that that's because true. there's no truth because right. that's pagan. That is totally pagan. Yeah. I, and, and when you also take away God, everything becomes God. Sex becomes God. Nature becomes God. Ideology becomes God. This is behind wokeism. This is behind, I mean, every, even behind, I won't get into, we won't have time, but an ancient mystery linked to our, our addiction to computers. Computers are linked to this. Uh, uh, virtual reality, new age, all this. 
this is linked to Bale and the pagan is the paganizing of America. 1960s, the door was really open to this, Jonathan. Did Bale, uh, the sign of the possessor, mm. physical sign, yeah. did it manifest yes. itself in America? Yeah, yeah right near here. Yeah, yeah, right near here. And we're in yeah. New York City, yeah. just yeah. a reminder. Yeah, this is one of the, the signs of Bale actually was a bull, a bronze bull, all over, all over the, the Amer- all over Israel was the, it was a sign and it was linked to the, you know, they went to Baal because they said, well, you're going to help us be prosperous. You're going to help our yeah. fields. Well, what happened is in a, in the 1980s, a sign appeared right near here. They, uh, they put down, they laid it. It was a massive, massive bronze bull, the sign of Baal and the sign in the Bible of a nation that once knew God, and is now turned away from God and is now subject to, to bail. And right by Wall Street, by the financial, which is about prosperity, we call it a bull market. Yeah. That's a bail market. You know, you know, and yeah. so and so and there and there's so there's actually, I won't go into it because we don't have the time, but even even a, a part of Bale's temple was recreated and erected right near where we are in New York City and in Washington. The possessor, Bale, yes. number one, yes. the second member of this yes. dastardly trio. The Enchantress. Yes. Tell us about her. Yeah. Actually, in, in Canaanite mythology, she is known as the, the wife or lover of Baal. But she appears everywhere. She appears in the Bible as she's called Astart or, or actually Ashtoreth. Ashtora. Ashtora. And you see Baal and Ashtora. And in that order. The first poles, is Baal. The Ashtoreth poles. Yeah. Or that sure. were worshipped. Well, yeah. yeah. So first is Baal, then comes Ashtora. And what was she? Well, she's known as Ishtar as well. She's also known as, when she went to Greece, she became Aphrodite. She became Venus. But it's a very dark, dark thing. She was the goddess of sexual immorality sexuality, divorce from marriage. She was actually known as the great harlot, the prostitute goddess. And so when she came, comes into a culture, what's going to happen? Well, what we, we would expect that as Baal comes in, the turning from God first, then we would expect something to happen to sexuality, a revolution. And that's exactly what happens starting in the 60s. The sexual revolution starts. This is the power. This is the the principality that will seek to possess a nation by turning the Christian sexual values, values of marriage, into pagan sexual values. That's exactly what we have been witnessing ever since. So this starts taking over our culture. It's the second part. And it goes deep. The Enchantress is, is a goddess of prostitution, yes. as you describe in the book, Jonathan. Yes. A goddess of drunkenness, yes. even, and many, many yes. vices, but all coming back to, to sex, promis- promiscuity, and gender confusion well, and gonna, gender it's madness. Gonna, it's going to get to that. Yeah, it's going to yeah. get to that. Yeah. So she, it's, But it starts first with taking sex out of marriage. Remember, she's the prostitute goddess. So what does the prostitute do? Takes sex out of marriage, puts it into the marketplace, puts it into the culture. So we're watching the sexualization of America and of the West. And what that means is she was, you know, she was detrimental to marriage. So we're watching marriage become weakened. We're watching marriages getting destroyed, broken homes, broken children, because that's what it does. But even, I'll give you a little mystery here that, that, and again, we can only touch on the things that are in the book, but the, the word for the prostitute back then in Greek is the word porne or porn. We get pornography actually comes from this goddess. The first pornography was from her. She put, did you put the images of naked women? She also, the por- pornographic literature came from her. We talk about the word erotic of happening to, uh, yeah. to the world. Well, well, that comes from the Greek word eros. Eros was, was a god who was born of this goddess. It all comes back. One last member yeah, of that yes. dark trinity, the destroyer. Before we go, we have about yeah. a minute before the yeah. break, Jonathan. Who is the destroyer? It always it goes right in progression. First, turning from God, then sexual sexual immorality. Then what happens is they Israel started offering up their children as sacrifices to the gods, particularly the god Molech. And Moloch is the destroyer. And so what, what, this is a pagan thing. This was common in the pagan world. But what it means is if we are continually f- following these gods, if they are coming back, if we are being paganized, we're going to end up actually offering up our own children. And like clockwork, yeah. it happens. We legalize abortion. We have killed 60 million children. And we won't have time to go into the mystery. But even when you look at the, I bring it out in the book that the ancient ways of offering up the children, to Moloch and to, yeah. are actually being reproduced right now without even people realizing. I mean, it's unbelievable that, that people should know, Jonathan, yeah. what went on in ancient times and, and during Bible times. Yeah. Moloch, this idol, people literally would sacrifice their children. Yeah. It, the Bible called it passing through the fire. Yes. Yes. I mean, and, and you detail it. Yeah. 
Yeah, it, it's the same way it happened with priests. I mean, we have our own form of priests. Same way, actually, actually, more poor children, basically minorities, were killed because of this God, and it's happening yeah. the same way here. It's it's following like clockwork. It, it's it's you can, you can say, how could they ever do that? We're doing it. We're following. The, these are this is what the gods do. This is what the pagan world do, did, and that's what we're doing. We're gonna go back to a member of that dark mm. trinity, Jonathan, mm, yeah. the goddess, the enchantress and her role in some of the gender madness we're seeing right now in the United States and the Western world. Yeah, there was another side to this goddess called Ishtar or Ashtoreth or Inanna, and that was that something strange. She, she says in, in the Tao, I had looked at the actually ancient inscriptions to see this, uh, and she says, I am a woman, I am a man. It says in a hymn to this goddess, it says she's the one who has the power to turn a man into a woman and a woman into a man. She is the one who does now. Now it's amazing because this has been this has been this has been growing until we are right now where we are. But it's it all began also in the sixties. The first part is she's going to seek to defeminize women. She's going to seek to to masculinize women. That and and that's the spirit in the culture. I mean, in every way, you don't need a man. You compete with a man. That's what she did. She she was a goddess with actually masculine qualities to her. A fighter. She would she would compete with men. So you see, and which also tears apart marriage. So all this all this is all together. Um, and you know, with that, she also she also um, is going to feminize men. And so, and so that's what you take away the lead. You know, there's, there's a spirit that hates men and, and there's a spirit that hates men if they are leading or whatever it is. And if a woman acts masculine, the, the society applauds it. If, if a man asks, ma acts masculine, then he's, he's, you know, he is condemned. That's something that's really strange, but that's the spirit of the goddess. That's what she does. And she's been doing it. She's doing it to children. She's doing, uh, boys are being trained this way. Uh, girls are being tra trained this way. In every way, this has affected our culture. That's just the beginning of her, of her transformation. Well, children, Jonathan, at the age of four or five years old are being told today that they can choose their gender. Yeah. Whether they want to be yeah. a boy uh, or a girl. This is this is Ishtar. And this, Ishtar. This, this is the spirit. And, the, yeah, and it started out like that. And now it, it started out originally just saying, hey, you know, be more like this one. But now it's come to this. You know, uh, you know, she had a she had a priesthood. The, the priesthood of the goddess was this. Listen, it was men dressed up in her temple as women. Those were the priests. And they would go around acting as acting as women. And so she is the goddess of androgyny, not combining male and female, blurring the lines between that. It's part of destruction. And that's what she did. And so and so you you have now again men dressing up as women. That's the return of the goddess. Is that the, you used to have that in, in the pagan world, you had it really central. And now this is prevalent in yeah, the pagan yeah, world. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. now it, it we don't realize it's been out, but now it was the gospel that that stopped us. Now it's back and it's all over. That is the spirit of the goddess. And, and not only that, well, it, not only that, now we talk about, you were just alluding to it, transgenderism. That, listen, she was the god of transgenderism. She, she actually kind of morphed between male and female. She had an assistant that went to male and female back and forth. And actually, she, her priests were, many of them were surgically altered. They actually were surgically altered, which affected their hormones and affected all the things that are happening now. Those were her priests. And you remember we talked about the spirit, what happens when the spirit comes back? It's worse. Well, back then, that was the priesthood. She's seeking to do this to an entire generation of children. To children. That, that's how that's how it's even more than it ever was. She actually had people dancing in front of her, some of these transition people, with, with scalpels celebrating this. This is, this is back because the gods are back. The return of the gods also reveals an ancient mystery. We've talked about New York City a few yes, times. Yes, this is good. You, yeah, but we this, have another is, NYC yes, component. That's right. Break that down for us. Yeah, yeah. All this that we that we have that has transitioned basically uh, uh, America. No pun intended. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> America, um, it, the Pride movement, the Rainbow, all the the gender movement. All began in New York City, and there was an event. It, event it happened right nearby where we are, and it was basically uh, there was a police raided a bar that was of, of same sexuality, and and there was a revolt, a riot. They called it Stonewall. Yeah. Every parade you see goes back to that as a celebration of that. But what is amazing is that when you look at that night, the all the signs of the goddess were there of her return was in that night, and there's so much that we I can only just touch on some. And this was 1969. This is 1969. I that okay. the summer of 69. Hey, there's so much here. I'll, I'll give you an example. 
The, the ancient texts say that the goddess, her, where she kind of rules, is in the Eshtam. Eshtam was the bar or the tavern. Stonewall is an Eshtam. It's a bar. It's a tavern. That's where, that's where she was. And that, that's where she reigned. One of the signs when she comes into battle, when the goddess comes into battle, she rides lions in her mythology. She's in pictures, lions. And she puts her head on the lion, she puts her foot on the lion's head saying, I am, I am so powerful. I'm on the lion's head. The lion's head, the first thing you would see would be the lion's head. Well, before this happened, this war, it was basically a, a, a culture war was going to happen with the yeah. goddess. The first thing that appeared on that street was a, was a place called the Lion's Head, right wow. next to Stonewall. Then Stonewall came. And, and there was something called, you know, we speak about in the ancient times that there were like priests or priestesses who would be filled by th these spirits, you know, be kind of they'd be avatars in a sense. They'd be well, there actually was someone, the, the, there was a person who triggered everything that night, and it was a woman, and it's a mystery woman, and she actually triggered the whole revolt. And that woman embodied the goddess Ishtar. She would, all the characteristics of that. Ishtar was called the storm. It says, you are the loud thundering storm. You are the storm. The woman's name was Storm or Storm May. And, and wow. I mean, and it, I mean it, it, there, I'm just scratching the surface. Yeah, yeah. There's something called the dance of the goddess, that when she's at war, she dances. There's a dance. In the middle of that, that riot, there, a dance yeah. breaks out. And they actually, the, the, the men who are dancing as women are actually, actually chanting words that go back to the tablets of Ishtar on that very night. And by the way, they were attacking police during these riots. They were trying to set them out, set the bar on fire yeah. with the police in there. Uh, another theme we see, unfortunately, in modern America, yeah. uh, police being targeted. Yeah, yeah. Um, take us back uh, to ancient times, to biblical times. And again, just so people know, this was not some fringe movement in those times. No. This was prevalent yes. throughout pagan society. Yes. Christians were an outlier at yes. the time. Yes. And a hated minority, to yes. be honest, in yes. the early days, especially the yeah. Roman Empire. Yes. Uh, this yeah. was, if people can understand what Jonathan is laying out, the dark trinity, the enchantress, the possessor, uh, this was the dominant force in the culture at that time, the dominant quote unquote religious force yeah, yeah. of and, the times. And it's this was mainstream, everything yeah. you're laying out. And it's coming back. And that, and that's why we're saying like, what is this? What is this? What is, all the things that were there are coming back. And even, uh, even this, I even mentioned what the night of when this all began, when all the, the Stonewall, when all this began, was was the exact was even the timing was according to the ancient Babylonian calendar. It happened on the weekend of the full moon. Happened by the summer solstice. Happened in the days of the goddess. I, without even going into detail, it all happened. Actually, it, the date of this was sealed. Was actually sealed on a day that, according to the ancient Babylonian calendar, says it's a that day is appointed to cast a spell to cause a man to love a man. That's when it was all sealed. And, and so it, it's all, I mean, it is, it is, it is, I mean, beyond anything that anybody could have made of. And it's not that these people knew what they were doing. We got to pray for everyone and we're all in the same boat, but they didn't know what they were doing, but this was the return. This is all like clockwork, the way yeah. this is happening. Jonathan, this is your seventh book. They've all been runaway bestsellers. You specialize and your anointing is in, I would say, unlocking ancient mysteries and making them relevant, showing the parallels to today. Yeah. I believe this is, and this is the author of The Harbinger, folks, and The Harbinger 2, and The Paradigm, The Oracle, many more. I believe this is indeed your most explosive book. Simple question, but I think important. Why did you write this? Why did you feel compelled to write this book right now? Because we are, every, every single person who's watching television today is being totally affected by this, one way or the other, going to have to, has to deal with it in one way or another. And that is that, that, you know, whether it's family members, whether it's sending your children to school, they're being indoctrinated, whether it's religious freedom, because we're, we're going to get to in the, in the, in the, I know in the next part about what the gods have to do with Christians, what there's an agenda here, there for that. So we need to be strong. Now, I knew when I wrote it, so, you know, Lord, you know, to write this, you know, it, it's touching. But you know what? If we don't stand, if we don't stand for truth and in love, but if we don't do it, this freedom we have is going to be encroached and encroached. The gods only have one agenda, you know. And just like back then, you 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 hit it on the head. The Christians were outliers. They were they were you know on the fringes. Well, that's exactly what's happening right now. And yet the gospel is the power, you know, the power that that actually right. undid this. And so that's why there's so much warfare. Just like there was, you know, this is like round two. Yes. You know what happened in the Roman Empire? We are now dealing with it. And, and so this is to arm 
believers, to strengthen them, to reveal, whoa, you're not just imagining, this is actually happening. What you're kind of, we were talking before the, the program, that even non-believers are saying, well, this is demonic. Well, it's actually exact. It's precise. You know, we're going to see, I think, in the next segment, how even, even the decisions of the Supreme Court happened exactly according to the goddess's calendar. And I we mean, had a big yeah. one recently, obviously, with and that was a good Wade, one. Which that was, was a like, good one. It was a good one. Yeah. yeah. It so, gave hope. So, yeah. And, and even, I'll just throw uh, one last thing in there. Even, you know, we talked about, you know, all these things came back to this thing called, they called Stonewall, and it celebrated yeah. the Stonewall. Well, well, in, in, the, in the ancient writings of the goddess, it says, calls the god, you are the stone that breaks the stone wall. And that night they were trying to break this on. So this is exact. It's real. God is, these are real because God is real. And you, we are in this battle. And it says yeah. we don't war against people. We war against principalities. Yeah. But God wants you to be victorious. We are not on the defense. No, we, no, no. We are to be on the offense. And we are, we are to be like the apostles were because they dealt with it too. Yes. And they were victorious. Yeah. And we need to just be equipped. We need to, I think you'd, we think you'd rather know than not know. And I don't say this lightly, and it's not an exaggeration to say we are locked in a struggle right now for the soul of America. Yeah, and, and I believe, and, and we can be victorious in God. That's all he's looking for. And I'm sure many people are watching who have people in their family who are very much taken by this, Amen. taken by, Absolutely. and it's not only for believers, it's for them too, yeah. to wake up because, whoa, I don't want, I don't want yeah. this. Jonathan, can you unpack yeah. or kind of review yeah. what we've been talking about? Yeah. People might hear the the title, the mm -hmm. return of the gods, yes. and say, hey, yes. there's only one God, Absolutely. and amen, by the way. Absolutely. But who are the yeah. gods? Who yeah. are we talking yeah. about? This Why is, is it so important? This is what the Bible lays down very clearly, that you have the gods of the nations, and they were false gods, false gods. But it says, behind the gods were spirits, were spirits, were, were the shedim, we talked about at the beginning, called in Hebrew, entities, behind, or the daimonia, which we get the word demon from, uh, evil spirit. They were behind, because there's a spiritual warfare, and you, certainly in this realm, you're going to have that. And so, listen, the gospel came, cleansed, you know, exercised the civilization, but Jesus gave a warning. What happens if we ever turn away from God? Having known God, it's worse to have known God and turn away. For Even for a civilization, it's going to be worse. The gods will return. The spirits will return to repossess the culture. And that is all the things you're seeing. And you're saying, how could they do this? This is crazy. How could they do this to children? How could they do this to this? It's just crazy. It doesn't stop. It is this is what you're watching. You're watching a repossession of the ancient gods, exactly what the Bible says. It's a reverse revival, I guess yes. you could say. <laughs> well, interesting, because what did we see? We saw we saw a reverse exorcism, which yeah. was to exercise God from the culture. And it was ta you take God's spirit out, other spirits will come in, and people won't even realize it, and you're going to have the signs of possession. People are going to be self-destructive. They're going to mutilate themselves. They're going to offer up their children. That's the sign of possession. And so we are dealing with that, but we have a greater power. But that is what we're we're dealing with right now. Yeah, and individuals can be possessed, as you lay out in the book, Jonathan. Yeah. But as we talked yeah. about earlier, civilizations, cultures, nations yes. can be possessed. You know, yes. Moses warned about this, and your book has scriptural backup yes. throughout. Yes. Moses warned about this. He warned the ancient Israelites, you can go in one of two yeah. ways, yeah. blessings or curses. Follow yeah. God or don't follow God. Jesus warned all of us, yes. as you said, about the wayward way, and yes. we seem to be heading down a wrong road right now. Yeah, there's no middle ground in the end. Yeah. I mean, it may look like a middle ground. You know, mix it in. You know, first one again when the, when the gods. Who first will come, you serve? Yeah, yeah, and 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 when they first came in, it was kind of like, okay, just be open, be tolerant. Well, look at where we are now. This is all part of that. Yeah, we've got the dark trinity, as Jonathan calls them: the possessor, the enchantress, and the destroyer. Baal, Ishtar, and Moloch. Yes, you may, these names may ring a bell from yes. your Bible. It's all biblical. Uh, what do these gods have to do, this is an interesting yeah, one, yeah. with the parades we see today in the modern world? Particularly one, and this goes back to the, and, and by the way, in the book, you know, because we're, we're only able to touch on things here, but the book, in this part, she's called the transformer because this is the goddess, but she's the one who transformed. She transitioned people. And by the way, you know, you, you said something. It was kind of like a, a slip, but it wasn't a slip. Or, or actually, I said something you said, yeah, like a pun. Well, actually, this is the goddess of transition. She transitions men into women, women into men, into their opposite. But it, what that, what's that is, that's a microcosm of what's happening to America. She's transitioning America into what it never was. She's transitioning a Christian nation into a pagan nation that would be at war with a Christian nation if, if it had seen it now. And so, you know, Baal caused the nation or caused now the spirit of Baal causes America to forget God. 
the spirit of Ishtar is causing America to forget America. So the, the parades, she was the goddess of parades. It says the people of Sumer, they, they parade before you, Ishtar, they parade before you. Well, all these parades, they, they started from something called the Ishtar Gate in Babylon. It was the Ishtar Gate, start of the parade. And, and I won't go into detail, but when we talked about all these parades today, started in New York City, started from that event called Stonewall. Where we are sitting right now, yeah. just a reminder. Yeah, and Stonewall, actually, the, the, the front of it is actually, pat, actually has the same architecture as the Ishtar Gate. And this is where the parade started. And the thing is, when you look at, when I looked at the ancient inscriptions about the parades, it talks about men parading as women. And women parading as men, and and it was a it was a parade of crossing the genders and breaking barriers. That's exactly what happened then. That is what's happening now. And and during this time, she had a certain time during these parades. It's like she would take possession of the culture. We are watching that now. The same thing we had never seen it before. And you know what? You know what? That it was the gospel came in. That's when those parades stopped. And so now that they're back is a sign that the nation, the civilization, is turning away from God and it's returning. We're going to talk more about the book, but real quick, why is it so important in the enemy, the devil, he exists, yeah, folks, yeah. for him and this dark trinity, these demonic entities, these demonic spirits that you're describing, why is it so important for them and their strategy to take down America? Why must America yeah. be paganized, yeah. essentially, yeah. for their strategy to proceed? Because number one, America is the head of nations. You take down America, what you do in America is gonna t it's not going to stay in America. It's going to touch the world. And it is. And it is. All these things we talked about, whether it's abortion, whether it's this, whether it's, you know, Stonewall, that began, that or that, that was championed by America across the world. Yeah. So that, number one. Number two, America was especially devoted to God, was consecrated to God. So the enemy is going to say, I'm going to take that same nation, and I'm going to consecrate it to me. And so through the gods, through actually America America is now spreading, instead of the gospel, is spreading pornography around the world. It's the cheap. So all these things, so that's why. And America was also patterned after Israel. So, so if Israel turned away from God, so therefore, well, if we can have America turn away from God, we can come back. Founded by godly men with a great destiny, yeah. the United States, who, but... Yeah, John Winthrop, one of the parents who warned America, don't turn away from God because you will be seduced by the gods. There are many mysteries that you unlock mm -hmm. in this book, mm -hmm. ancient mysteries. You relate them to the modern day. One of them is the mystery <laughs> of Junium. Yes. What is that? She had The goddess had one month out of the year that she especially possessed the culture. It was actually named after her lover, Tammuz. But now, when was it? Well, the ancient, I looked at actually St. Jerome. And this is Ishtar, by the this way. This is Ishtar. Okay. St. Jerome is actually writing about the festivals of the goddess and, and all the, and the processions and all that in the summer and says it happened in the month of Junium. June. June is the month. And so June has now returned to the goddess. And now the goddess, is, that's why June has been taken over by this, because that's what it was back then. And let me give you another one, Eric, you know, with this. What is the sign that's going all over the place? We're saying, you know, it was a good sign originally, but it's the rainbow. It's taken yeah. over everything. It's in children's uh, cereal boxes. Yeah. It's everywhere. It's on, on U.S. embassy buildings. I won't go into it, but I will tell you in, in the book, there is a mystery behind the rainbow that goes to, back to the goddess. It was her sign. I mean, it was God's sign. She took it. By the way, she's also a principality who steals things from other gods. So she took this from God. And now, and actually, I'll, I'll even tell you that every color has a mystery that goes back. And I will say also something else. What that actually, what this sign actually means if people have no idea what it really means. If they did, I don't know that they would be waving it or be wearing it, but it actually goes back to the goddess. It actually is a sign of her possessing, her possessing a culture. You know, ironically enough, Jonathan, in June 2022, we had uh, Roe v. Wade overturned yes, that by was the a good thing. Supreme Court. Yes. And we talked earlier about Moloch, yes. uh, child sacrifice, yeah. and that was a good thing for sure. I was there. I just want yeah. to mention, I didn't share this with you before the show. I was there the day of that Supreme Court ruling yeah. in D.C. at the yeah. Supreme Court. Yeah. And to say to use the word demonic, I don't use it oh, lightly. Yeah. There were howls essentially saying, you know, we want sacrifice. To we want to kill children. Yeah. It, it was stunning. I was there covering it for TBN. It was stunning to witness firsthand. Yeah. And it, interesting, Eric, because we were talking before the program, but I don't share this a lot. The day that this book was finished, when I finished the book, was June 24th, the day that 
Roe versus Wade was overturned, wow. which is an altar of the gods, you know. Yeah. And and now speak on the other side of this. Here's a mystery about the Supreme Court. When you look at the Supreme Court decisions, which have have overturned gender, you know, there's three major ones. One is in 2003, which is the basically the normalization of same sex. Uh, you know, uh, second was 2013, the Defense of Marriage Act was struck down, and the finally the the, the striking down of marriage as we know it, 2015. The, the time of the goddess was June, and the time of the goddess especially was the end of June at the, at the time of the summer solstice. The one in 2003 yeah. took place at the end of June at this exact time. The one in 2013 took place at the end of June, month of Tamas, time of the goddess. Yeah. The, one, the last one, the overturning of marriage, happened at the same time. In fact, they all happened on the same day, June 26, which is actually the same day that Stonewall was sealed. And you remember that night? Remember when this happened all over? That night, there were rainbows all over the White House. Yeah. Of the White House, it's like the God is saying, I possess this nation. Now, well, that, that was the 10th of Tammuz. The 10th of Tammuz is that date on the biblical, on the, the Babylonian calendar says it's appointed to cast a spell to cause a man to love a man. That was the day that marriage was overturned, that night. This is, you could not make this up. Do the gods and spirits, you yeah. believe, Jonathan, actually determine the rulings? Well, you just laid it out. The exact behind, times are handed yeah, down. Yeah, but yeah. these Supreme Court rulings, some of the bad ones, we yeah. would say, th there is an influence behind this, it's spiritual like, yeah, influence. Yeah, it's like, it's like the harbinger. It's not like the yeah. people knew when they planted that tree. Right. They, they didn't, or, when, or when Dashiell spoke those words of judgment, didn't know that. But it's all according to the mystery. And, and, and the gods are dangerous. Let me, let me, let me yes. put this there. That is that, remember this, keep this in mind. They were cast out by the gospel. They were cast out by Christians. Okay. So when they come back, they have a vendetta. They are focused on Christians. They're focused on conservatives because they try to stop this thing from happening, but they're focused especially on Christians. So as the, as the gospel pushed them out, they're trying to push out believers. As the gospel marginalized them, they're trying to marginalize believers. As the word of God pushed them out, they're trying to, to nullify the word of God and push it out of culture, push out. Yeah. So, so this is a dangerous thing that, that there's a focus on us. There's a focus. That's why religious freedom is being threatened. That's why that all these things are happening. This is round two. We're the obstacle. Yeah, uh, exactly. Followers of Jesus are the main obstacle to the God's plans coming to fruition. It, exactly. And that, we have a bullseye on our backs. That's right. And that is, and yet we are to be overcomers. We're to be conquerors. Right. And so, and so in God. And so, and that is another reason for, for, I knew I had to write the return of the gods now. So believers could know it and could wake up and also yeah. rise. What is the end game for yeah. the gods, for these demonic entities? What is their ultimate plan? Every knee shall bow, <laughs> but to them. You know, what happened, you know, here's the thing. When, when the gods were coming into the culture, you know, it, again, it happened very subtly. You know, when, when it, it came in, when they came into America, same thing. Came in America, it was, you know, hey, open your mind, be open, everybody do your own thing. Listen, it was just to open the door to get these new things come in. Once they're in, or once they're in power, then they want the door closed. Then instead of do your own thing, it's do our thing and bow your knee. And if you don't confess, if you don't celebrate with us, we're going to cancel you. Notice it went from tolerance to canceling. There's no accident. The Bible says, woe to those who call evil good and good evil. You know, and so the first part is calling evil good. That's sin. That's saying sin is okay. Second part is calling God and the gospel and believers evil. Well, this is where we, it happened with every God. What happened when Baal took power? He started, he hunted down the prophets. That's when Elijah came. God raised up Elijah, you know. And so, and this what, same thing with Ishar. It is, what happens is they want every knee to, every tongue to confess and, and join us. And, and that's what believers have to not do that because you know what? When, when the believers were being persecuted under Rome at that time, yeah. they just, all they had to do was offer up some incense to the, to the emperor and just worship a God. All they had to do was confess it. They said, no, we're going to stand for God no matter what. We have to be those same people. Yeah, and America is a target, obviously, the ultimate prize for the gods, Jonathan, but this is a global initiative yes, that they are embarking the world. on. Touching the world. Touching the world for sure. What does this tell us about the time, yeah. the signs of the times? Where are we on the prophetic time clock for these demonic spirits to return in such a major way? Well, it's amazing you say that because 
This is kind of bridging the gap between what you read about in the Bible about end time prophecy. Yeah. Men shall be lovers of self. They shall be haters of good. They will persecute Christians. You know, uh, that's where th this is setting the stage. We are raising a generation because under the influence of the, we're raising a generation to be, an, to be enemies of God. That's what we're doing. And, and that's why the all, and, and so that's is what will happen is if, if we do not, if there's not a revival, that's the only hope America has. Um, and if believers don't stand for the gospel, don't spread the gospel, if everybody is intimidated and they don't open their mouth and they don't they don't share God, that's what the darkness wins. You know, when 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 the light goes out, the darkness comes in. And so the thing is that that with that is that that it leads to persecution. But then again, the Bible speaks about that. Now, but here's the thing: is there hope? I owe every book I I you know this, every book I have it ends with hope. And what what is the hope? And the, the thing is that, listen, this could, you can take it another way. This is the most exciting time because you, you know, believers are praying, I wish I could live in biblical times. Congratulations, because you're there. These are the same days. Listen, Moses stood against the gods of Egypt. You know, Elijah stood against Baal. You know, the Maccabees stood against the gods of the Greeks. The, the first Christians stood against the gods of Rome. But these are, these are biblical times. You know, they don't stop the gospel unless you stop. You know, that's what the enemy wants. He wants you to stop. He wants you to live on the defensive. That we are to be, we have the light, we have the answer, we've got the power of Messiah. Messiah is stronger. It says, who is like you among the gods? There's nobody like God. There's nobody like Jesus. The power to cast out, the power of light is stronger than darkness. But we have to rise, we have to stand, we have to spread the gospel. We. What's the answer to the spirits? The spirit of God, live by the spirit. What's the answer to the gods? The word of God, the power of God. Much stronger. This is an exciting time. You know, you know, listen, what is the most exciting part of a movie? The last 15 minutes. Yeah. You know, you know, be thankful that he chose us to live at such an exciting time. God is entrusting us to live. But what I would say is this, that if there's anything in your life, I'm talking to everybody out there, and that, that is linked to the God, whether it's pornography, whether it's lust, whether it's, you know, abortion, you have to get it out of your life, number one. There's no revival without repentance. So get that out. Then ask for God's cleansing and his power and live all out for God. For such a time as this, this could be the most exciting time, but we need to rise to it. So even if there's darkness, you know, the, the lights light up the world. That's when it's dark, you know? So this is the time to do that. And if you have people in your family who need to spread the gospel, spread, the, let them see this, you know, whatever you need to do. That's why I wrote it.